Well, here's my first attempt at a how-to video. I've got DiMarzio five-way switch, CTS pots, one with a push-pull for the tone, Russian oil and paper capacitor. I've already pre-cut all of the wiring just to save a little time in the video, make it go by a little quicker. Um, let's put this thing together. It's going to have the five-way with the push-pull allowing to split the coils in any position. Normal Ibanez wiring comes with the five-way humbucker, humbucker split middle, middle, then the neck humbucker split middle, then your neck humbucker. The way I do it, very similar it's going to be the neck full, then the neck full middle, the middle bridge full humbucker middle, and then your bridge humbucker. Difference being my splits will be done with the push pull so you can split the coils in any position. So you could have a single coil strat tone in position one and position five. Allowing for a few more tonal options that you don't get with a normal Ibanez wiring setup. Along with everything is upgraded. The pots are better than stock Ibanez. The wire from Gavit is I will never use anything but you don't have to strip the wire you just push back the cloth covering saves time better wire and I've built this handy little jig right here to I've already put it together wrong to allow me to solder it all together on the table and not in the guitar this particular wiring harness will be going into an RG550 with a pick guard, so I could do all this work on the pick guard, but I prefer to do my soldering on this. If I drop some solder on my piece of plexiglass, no big deal. Right, if I can just get this thing to spin on here. All right. Obviously, this is a 100% soldering job. Any soldering iron will do. This is the 799 Cheapo from Harbor Freight. Others like to say the 30 watt with the push button is the only way to go. I've only used these. I have pretty good luck with them. Very rarely does it leave me saying I need more heat. And there you have it. There is your basic layout of your control switch and your knobs. First thing you're going to do with the volume pot is we're going to label it like lug 1, 2, and 3. Same thing with the control pot or the tone pot 1, 2, and 3 is your third lug is always grounded to the back of the pot. So you're going to want to take a pair of pliers, your finger, any which way you can do it to get this thing to touch to the back of the pot. And that's where we're going to solder it. And we'll just take one little dab of solder, take your gun, heat it up, and... You don't want it quite a bit on this one this is pretty much where all your grounding is going to happen and there you go that one is done now along with this push pull tone it's going to have one extra little jumper which i have created out of just a piece of wire left over from a previous build on a tone capacitor now with this one you're going to want to jump lugs 
one and three. And I've already got this cut so it fits right in there. Things like this one, the hard ones, I like to get out of the way first. Then you don't have to come back to it. So with this one, see, I'll prop it up with a little tape. Grab my soldering iron and my solder. And we'll just heat it up. And a little dab will do ya. Boom. Boom. Your jumper is now installed. Now along with this one, I also like to do the grounds first. This is a ground wire coming off of number three, grounding to the side of the pot. So we'll just go ahead and we'll get that in there. Give it a tug, make sure she's good and tight. She ain't gonna come out of there. Now with this one, I have already planned to route it around the pot and ground to the side. These CTS pots are a little bit different than the Burns pots. Burns pots you can ground right to the top, which I find to be a little bit more convenient but they are in fact a quarter inch taller so to save space inside the small RG cavity I went with these CTS I've yet decided if they're any better or any worse okay and along with this one I guess it would help if I told you how I know how all this happens you're gonna wanna do yourself a good wiring diagram I use diagrams from DiMarzio and I have found recently that there are some discrepancies like I have found a small bit of bad information this one seems to be 100 percent correct I have had no problems with this wiring diagram I've done it enough times now where I have it memorized But then, so you've got a ground here, grounding back here to the back of the tone pot. This comes directly off of the volume pot. So what I'm going to do is I like to load a little bit of solder onto the end of my soldering iron. That allows me to put it right where I want it. I'm going to put it right on the end of that wire. Then I'm going to take that wire back to our grounding spot, heat that up, and boom. Give it a tug, make sure she's tight. Great thing about these jigs is you can rig everything up nice and tight. So it sits into your cavity of your 570 tight, sits into your next to your pick guard very tight. Just seems to work out pretty well. So with this guy, I'm gonna get a little bit of solder down here. So if I can get it in view of the camera. A little solder down here onto the grounding point itself. Perfect. Then I'm going to come in with my wires one at a time, heat up the solder, stick it in, done. Come in with my wire, heat up the solder, stick it in, done. If you feel you might need another little drop of solder, I feel I might. Looks like there's plenty, but always better safe than sorry. Well. Got it too hot. Load up the end of my thing. I don't know if you can see that. Oop, dropped it off. But I can load up the end of my gun and then drop it right where I want it. All right.
here's our grounds are done from the volume pot to the tone pot and we're out of black wires minus the output ground we'll get to that later as well so now we've got to connect the five way to lug number one of the volume pot usually comes off of I'd like to say lug four of the left side I like to get a little solder on there first heat it up stick my wire in <sighs> stuck it's there and with this one I've ran it down I like to keep it tight bring it over right on up into lug one and again with these grab it wire you don't have any stripping you just kind of stick it where you want it I'm not going to solder that one quite yet because it has a second wire that comes off of it going to lug two of the tone pot so I'm just going to stick it in there push it against the jig tight bend it where it needs to be bent and get it right up in there in the lug two so these two are ready take a little solder Heat up the whole deal. Make sure you got a nice good connection. Come back over here to tone lug two on the tone knob. Give it a little heat. Make sure there's a good connection. Pull on everything. Make sure it's good. We're almost there. We've only got two wires left in a tone pot. Now I'm just going to go ahead and run the output hot or input just because I want my tone capacitor out of the way of that wire. Output goes on the lug 2 of the volume pot. So that's where all the signal enters the entire circuit. And there we go. Now I've already pre-bent my Russian oil and paper tone capacitor. I want an extra step and I stripped some old wiring and added a little insulation to the bare contact just in case if it wants to ground out onto my copper shielding. I always like to copper shield all my projects. Keeps out the 60 hertz hum. You can point a cell phone at my guitars and they do not make noise. So, tone pot, lug three to the ground. Now I'm going to come in there, see if I can get this propped up a little bit so we can get a little more light in there. Maybe you can see a little better. Come in there with my soldering iron and my solder. We're going to solder on the tone capacitor to lug one. It's a little bit of extra wire there. I may or may not clip that off. I'll probably just bend it over for sake of saving everything extra on the pot and then you can see how I already got it bent it's already touching my grounding point I'm just gonna go ahead and go on in there with a little bit of solder get a nice big bead going there because that's also where 
the output ground goes. And there it is. So with my output ground, same thing as I did earlier. So I'm going to load that wire up with just a little bit of solder. I'll get it on the end of my soldering iron. And then onto the end of my wire. Just like that. Come on in to where we already have a little bit of solder. Give it some heat. Melt it in. <sighs> Done. Minus the output jack, which I will reuse on the RG550. This is going into and soldering up the pickups themselves, which I'll do in the next video while attaching it to the pick guard. This is one complete five way with a push pull for an RG550 570. Thanks for watching.